Well, hello, everybody. This is Carrie. And guess what? We knew it was going to happen. We knew every single day there was going to be stuff dropping on the docket like it's hot because the deadlines are coming in and they're coming in hard. We got a couple of things that hit the docket this afternoon. Let's take a look. Notice of supplemental discovery. This is coming from Dave Cacciatore. And it is a body-worn camera video from the Orange County case 10573. Oh, this is 2018. It's the 2018 body-worn camera footage. We knew this was going to come in. You guys, this is the one where she was arrested. She wasn't charged, but neither was George. George wasn't charged either uh, because they would not. They refused to cooperate with the prosecution and testify against one another. So they had to drop the charges. They didn't have any choice. But state saying, you know what? We're going to use it. And I'm sure that Owen's little team over there, the Three Stooges, they're going to be jumping on this one. Now, I did see another thing that dropped that says uh, amended notice of taking depositions. This is the deposition, deposition for Julie Harper, Dr. Julie Harper. They're, they were scheduled to do it on the 1st of October. I don't know if the specific time changed or if the where they were taking it was going to change. I'm not quite sure, but they, or is it that they've added Tony Henderson to the list of who's going to be there? I don't know. It just came from the state, but we do know this already that they will be doing this deposition with her. Next thing on the docket. Oh, and if you missed our recording this morning of what happened with the JAC and the previous attorneys for Sarah Boone, them getting paid, we, uh, that's up in our live stream section of our channel that happened this morning and we were there. Okay, motion to suppress defendant's statements at Orange County Sheriff's Office. <laughs> I knew he wasn't going to give up that easy. Oh, my gosh. What in the world? Oh, my goodness. Okay. So, you guys, remember when he went in in this last hearing and he was arguing this? He got denied on this the first time. And the judge basically said, you're not showing me any proof. You're, you're putting out cases, but you're not telling me why. And the state ended up arguing it. And they said, no, that we're, we're keeping it in. They read their Miranda rights. I think this waiver portion down here is what was not read. This is the part I think was not read to her. Having these rights in mind, do you wish to talk to us now? That one question. I think that's the only thing she left out. <sighs> So he's gone through, good gracious, he goes through each of the details. I guess he's being very specific in this since he got denied the first time. After Carla Rodriguez arrived on the scene, this was the first lady that was there on the scene. She realized a death had occurred. She then advised her superiors and secured the scene. Yeah, that's normal. Sometime later, the homicide investigators, Detective Coffelotz, and Scott Lowen arrived. These two investigators would ultimately be responsible for the homicide investigation and were involved in the interrogation of the defendant at Orange County Sheriff's Office the next day. The defendant was ordered to remain on scene while they conducted their investigation. The defendant stayed outside of her apartment for approximately 14 hours during this time. Wow. Wow. At some point, the defendant was asked to get into a vehicle with the detectives. Once inside, they recorded an interrogation with the defendant after partially reading her Miranda rights and omitting the final question. Yep, that's it. She did it, she did it both times. She omitted that question both times. The defendant was advised this recorded interrogation was routine protocol. That's true. She was an official procedure for any death investigation. During the investigation, the detective asked to see the defendant's phone. The defendant complied and gave her the phone to the detectives. The defendant was asked to unlock her phone, and she complied with the demands of the lead investigator. She signed a waiver, and she gave verbal authorization. So, um, yeah, number seven is bleh. Then it says, after detective had the defendant's phone for a period of time, she came back and told the defendant that she was taking the phone. The detective asked the defendant to sign a form releasing it to the OCSO for further investigation. The defendant acquiesced to authority and signed the form. They're saying she they, So now they're saying they strong-armed her? I guess so. 
the defendant was told that one of the detectives would return her phone to the defendant at her apartment in Winter Park the following afternoon. He's already said all this in court at the last hearing. Later that evening, the defendant moved to her ex-husband's home, Brian Boone, for the night. Using her ex-husband's phone, the defendant called Lee Detective Copsell to express her concern. The detective had not been truthful about law enforcement motives as it relates to the defendant. So, in other words, she got it. She got there and she started talking to Brian. And Brian's like, "You're a freaking idiot. You're going down." And she's like, "I am. You think so? You really think so?" The defendant told the detectives she believed that they were trying to trick her. <gasps> no, detectives never do that. <laughs> The detective assured the defendant that they were not trying to trick or implicate her, but that the following day, the defendant needed to drive to the Orange County Sheriff's Office to retrieve her phone. The detective explained that the reason for the change in plans was because she was pregnant and not feeling well. I don't think any of that matters, guys. Yeah, they lied, but I think they have every... I, I don't think there's anything against the law with them doing that. The next day... Because you know how sometimes you'll see like somebody will be giving a statement and they'll lie and say, so-and-so just flipped on you. They just flipped on you and really they hadn't flipped yet. I, they can do that. So then the next day, February the 25th, the defendant arrived at the OCSO to retrieve her phone and had questions about this tragic event. While still under the impression that she was retrieving her phone, Lowen led the defendant upstairs into an interrogation room. A custodial interrogation ensued. Immediately after the interrogation, the defendant was arrested and charged with the offense above. This approximate two-hour interrogation was recorded, and all of the world has watched it many, many, many times. The initial dialogue between Detective Copsell and the defendant, Sarah Boone. Detective, I'm going to have you sit in the green chair. appreciate you coming in. Yes, ma'am, and I wanted to ask you about these because I have a list of questions. I mean, you have a moment referring to this when she wrote her written notes. Detective said, sure. Detective, um, so, um, obviously we, we received his autopsy. And the detective says, so I'm going to read your rights again because we have to talk to you about that. And we're done talking about the incident. We just have to do it. She did say that. Just like we did yesterday. And Sarah says, normal protocol. And detective says, just like we did yesterday. Remember I read you the rights? Yeah. It's the exact same thing. But since I'm asking you follow-up questions, I need to read them to you again. Okay. So then she reads her everything but the last line. The detective says, do you understand what I just read to you? Boone says, yes. Detective says, perfect. Okay. So this morning we went to his autopsy and we were informed of some entries he had by the doctor. Defendant, where? Detective, so he's got scratch marks to his back. And then we know what happened after that. So the interrogation, the interrogation continued for approximately two hours. At the end, while still in the interrogation room, the defendant was placed in handcuffs and arrested. The detective read the defendant's her Miranda rights directly from the printed card of the OCSO. The detective omitted the final question printed on the standardized Miranda card of the Orange County Sheriff's Office. The detective omitted the same Miranda rights question that she omitted the day before. The omitted final Miranda rights question is, having these rights in mind, do you wish to talk to us now? The defense has yet to receive a true and accurate copy of the Miranda rights card from the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Upon information and belief, it would look like something like this. And they show a sample. Based upon all the circumstances surrounding the interrogation, the defendant's statement was coerced and not freely and voluntarily given. The defendant no did not freely and knowingly waive her rights under Miranda. As such, the entire two-hour interrogation should be suppressed. And, of course, this is signed by James Owens. So here's the thing. And if you remember in the hearing on Thursday, Prosecutor Jay said, he said there is no specific procedure, I think, is what he said, in the Orange County Sheriff's Office. And then if Mr. Uh, Owens wanted to find that information, he could go look for it himself because it is available to the public. But I looked for it. I couldn't find anything either. So... You know, of course, I was in the middle of doing that when a lot of other things happened. So I haven't been able to follow through with that uh, recording. Damn it. I just remembered that. I forgot I was doing it. But yeah, I was in the I was in deep on that one and I didn't find anything. So we'll see what the judge does on that. Ooh, did they deny? <gasps> what? It says the state's motion for court appointed experts to produce reports. Order denying it. 
Okay, so basically yesterday, I just I was just working on this video on this motion. The state went back and said, okay, fine. You know, you got all that. You're going to be doing these new experts and everything. We want to see the reports from these experts prior to Thursday, the 26th, when we have our trial conference. And the judge came back and said, nope, you don't have to see that. The motion is denied. Judge Cranick, why'd you do that? Well, you win some, you lose some. We're not going to win all of them as long as we win the race, right? interesting okay so there you go guys that's your docket update for september the 24th of 2024 this tuesday afternoon i hope you guys stay well stay safe and i will talk to you very very soon thanks for watching everyone if you enjoyed this video please do not forget to like and subscribe on your way out and feel free to leave a comment have a blessed day